Hi everyone, Vega here, and after a brief break our channel returns, and in today's video we're going to return to the largest star within 1000 light years, the father and titan of our local area, Betelgeuse. What would happen if it were to approach our solar system? So, let's get to it. Before we start the video, don't forget this is the latest in our Brightest Star series, and you may want to check out the previous video on Betelgeuse where it compared it to Ridgeville before this one. Videos are also available about local stars like Canopus, Castor or Antares. Click the card above if you'd like to follow the link. And now, back to the red supergiant. First of all, let's look at some basic facts. Betelgeuse, as we can see here, is also known, of course, as Alpha Orionis and has a radius of around 764 solar radii. Although we don't know this completely, as we don't know the exact distance Betelgeuse is from planet Earth. This translates to some 557 million kilometers, or as we can see here, 3.7 astronomical units. And the immense size of Betelgeuse means it takes half an hour for light to travel from one side to the other. Its luminosity is between 90 and 150,000 suns, and its distance, as far as we know, is around 700 light years. And as I say, it's not completely sure exactly how far. The apparent magnitude of 0.5 finally makes Betelgeuse one of the brightest stars in our skies generally considered on the list, sandwiched between Southern Hemisphere stars Vachinar and Hadar. Betelgeuse is classified as an M1, M2 red supergiant. In this graphic, Betelgeuse begins its long journey towards our solar system. Now this is at 575 light years, and we look closely as Betelgeuse slowly gets brighter. Now the reason we've moved to 575 light years is because Betelgeuse now, instead of being 11th on the brightest star list, it's now the brightest star in the sky, after the sun of course, replacing the white dog star of Sirius as the number one spot. For reference, Sirius is just 8.6 light years distance, and so we begin to see the massive power of Betelgeuse. It is thought that Betelgeuse is less than 10 million years old, and the reason we don't know many things about Betelgeuse is because we think it's changed its course during its lifetime. It's believed to originate from the Orion OB1 association of stars, which includes other stars from Orion's belt, but at some point in its history it's due skewed off course, and we don't fully know why, it's a bit of a mystery really. What we do know is that Betelgeuse froths and pulsates like we can see here, and would engulf at least Venus, but more likely Earth and Mars. Indeed, if distance measurements are a long way off, it may even be able to engulf Saturn itself. This is due to the photosphere of Betelgeuse being very difficult to measure exactly. The picture you see here, pulsating, is actually a real image of Betelgeuse. It's what the star really looks like. Betelgeuse is one of very few stars which is large enough and close enough that we're actually able to photograph the disk, which makes it extremely interesting indeed. We now continue Betelgeuse's journey towards the solar system. The next milestone for the frothing giant is 125 light years. This is because it now reaches minus 4.8 apparent magnitude and replaces the planet Venus as the brightest object in our sky after the moon and the sun. Betelgeuse is now incredibly bright but for, for now remains just a point of light. Interestingly, Betelgeuse doesn't actually have the widest diameter of the stars in our skies. That title after the sun goes to the little known star of Ardoradus at just 200 light years distance is smaller and much closer than Alpha Rhinus. That said, both Ardoradus and Betelgeuse would still remain points of light in the sky really, just to the naked eye of course. Our journey continues and above the beautiful city of San Francisco we see slowly now arriving at 8.6 light years distance Betelgeuse. The reason we've chosen this distance is because it's the distance of the current brightest non-solar star in our skies, the dog star of Sirius. You may remember Sirius had an apparent magnitude of minus 1.46, but we see the red supergiant now becoming a class of star we don't currently have in our skies. Its 9 to 10.6 apparent magnitude is now a Goliath and beginning to approach the second brightest object in our skies, the Moon, although not quite there yet. 8.6 light years for reference is still some 81 trillion kilometers away, and at this point, it built Betelgeuse would remain some 212 million times further away than the Moon, but almost approaching it in brightness, as I said before. You may wonder what the largest stars in our local area are, and by local area I mean a thousand light years distance. Here's a list. It is worth bearing in mind that this list is just rough, as it's because some of the figures are not exact for the reasons we outlined before. 
Often distance measurements to stars can include huge margins of error, which makes it difficult to know exactly the size and or brightness of the given star. It's not often we see a list like this, and it took some time for me to research, so there may be some errors in it. You can see, see for yourselves that many of the stars are not famous. Obviously, the red supergiant that is in Antares and the huge beautiful blue-white star Rigel are famous stars as well as the local giant of Canopus, but the rest remain relatively unknown and under-researched stars. What we do notice is that other than Antares, few come close to the gigantic star size of Betelgeuse. In a previous video, Rigel vs. the Sun, I called Rigel the mother of our local area, but we can see here that if that's so, Betelgeuse really is the father. Our next way marker is 3.2 light years distance. This is because at this point, the Betelgeuse now becomes second only to the Sun itself in brightness from our planet Earth. We see its apparent magnitude now reaches minus 12.7, and it is now also the closest known star to us, usurping the Alpha Centauri system by around a one light year. The question of whether Betelgeuse's disk could be observed at this distance remains unanswered for now. What is very interesting is that Betelgeuse would become a celestial object that throughout history would have probably protagonised in tales and folklore, just like our moon and sun have done. For comparison's sake, if we were now to remove our sun and take it out to the same distance, 3.2 light years, its equivalent magnitude would be minus 0.3, a very bright star, but not the brightest star in the skies by any means, and in a strange twist of fate, a similar brightness to Betelgeuse's in its current state and current location of 700 light years distance. Now, finally, Betelgeuse arrives in our solar system. It's now 380 astronomical units, some 45 billion kilometres away, and more than 12 times further from the Sun than the distant planet Neptune, and some 380 times further away than planet Earth. Betelgeuse has now reached the same brightness as our Sun, but of course the spectacle could be something completely different, like we see here. A new daylight sun providing star in our sky, but not the dazzling radiating light of the Sun, yet a pulsating blob of light and heat emanating from over a distance. At over twice the radius of the Sun now, Betelgeuse would be unavoidable, terrible and breathtaking, hanging over us and becoming a new guiding light. Betelgeuse is a slow rotating star much like our Sun, but at this distance, on the very far reaches beyond even much of the Kuiper Belt, I think it would certainly be the beginning of the end of the human race. We could no longer survive in double the sweltering heat, and our planet would slowly heat up until the oceans finally boiled away. For other planets, however, twice the brightness and heat could come in handy and create a second habitable zone somewhere past the region of Mars, but still in the safe zone close enough to the Sun not to be perturbed by Betelgeuse's enormous gravitational attraction. It's fairly well known that the giant star surprisingly dimmed sufficiently in the past year. The truth about red supergiant stars like Betelgeuse is that they can extend way beyond their photosphere. You can see in this graphic gases extend as far as at 40 astronomical units, which is far beyond the orbit of the furthest planet Neptune, even interfering with Pluto. This could have affected the dimming of the star, having passed in front, or even end stellar gases between ourselves and the red giant star. It's not fully known at this point why Betelgeuse dimmed. In our final graphic, Betelgeuse finally arrives within the solar system, and there's little point in depicting the damage it would do to the planets, but at the extreme distance of now 132 astronomical units, it's equivalent to the farthest known body we know, far, far out, and it would have a spectacular display. We see Betelgeuse storming into life. The frozen solid surface of far, far out slowly melts, and at first sublimating gases like nitrogen, oxygen and methane, Water vapour slowly turns into water as the pressures on the fragile world increase, although it's likely much of this would sublimate fairly quickly. Even at 132 astronomical units, with an apparent magnitude of minus 28.7, Betelgeuse would far outshine the Sun as the closest planet to Earth. We can see here on the left the Sun equivalent from far, far out. At just minus 16, it remains brighter than the full moon, but we know Betelgeuse really now is just a different category of star. The red supergiants are truly stellar titans of this universe. In our local area of a thousand years, Betelgeuse is the largest of all. We remain thankful that the red shoulder of Orion isn't near to our solar system, because if it were, it would mean the end of humanity. I wonder what tales the human race would have told had Betelgeuse ever come so close. It would have been great, terrifying and fascinating for us to consider.
Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already and welcome back to the channel after this brief haters. Don't forget to check out our presence on Facebook and Twitter if you can. Stay safe in these difficult times of course that we find ourselves in and I'll see you on the next one.